So today we're taking a look at the S24 Ultra versus the iPhone 15 Pro Max when it comes to who takes the best photos. Now, I had a hard time trying to figure out how I was gonna do this comparison because there's so many variables. The S24 Ultra has a 3X camera and the 5X camera is 50 megapixels, where the iPhone 15 Pro Max doesn't even have a 3X camera and the 5X camera is only 12 megapixels. Also, the S24 Ultra has a 10X camera where the iPhone has to digital zoom to match that. And I'll be honest, I actually kind of forgot about the 10X camera, so there's only a couple tests in here. Um, but I did sneak in some iPhone 15 Pro 3X camera shots so that we could compare that. Is that not fair? Does, does that mean iPhone's an automatic fail? Now I tried my best to shoot as much as I could on all the different cameras in RAW, JPEG, high res RAW, night mode, and portrait mode. But I'm gonna do something completely different for this video. I'm not gonna label which phone it is, so it's just gonna say A or B, and I want you guys to try and guess what phone you thought those images were taken on, and we'll come back at the end of the video and try and figure out the findings, and I'll give you my thoughts on what I've been seeing. With that out of the way, commence the image test. Let's go. 
better overall camera system the s24 ultra is a clear winner having that extra 3x camera way more useful than the 5x camera in my opinion which is one of the reasons why i got the 15 pro instead of the pro max and of course that 5x camera that it does have is 50 megapixels and it looks way better if you're shooting at high resolutions but when it comes to portrait mode i think i still have to give it to the iphone it seems to perform a little bit more consistently and that's not saying the s24 ultra takes a bad portrait mode image i just prefer the skin tones as well as the cutout job around the subject Okay, so I have some images loaded in here and we can take a look at what it's like when shooting raw on both of these phones. And I just have a bunch of images here that we can take a look at and see the detail and the dynamic range. And the first shot I wanna start off with here is a portrait shot. This isn't a portrait mode shot. This is just a portrait that I took on the 5X camera on both of these phones in case you didn't wanna use portrait mode. Now the iPhone comes in looking pretty similar to what it would look like off the camera. Maybe it's a little bit more desaturated, but because this is raw, we can do lots of stuff. Now the S24 Ultra on the right here, I don't know why it looks like this. It looks horrible. And I've seen this a few times with some raw files from Samsung. I don't know why it does this. Uh, it only does it sometimes. So I'm gonna try and fix it here. And first of all, it looks like all of the highlights are gone and all the shadows are lifted. So we're gonna go in here and bring some of those back. So first of all, I'm gonna bring the exposure down, bring some of these shadows down. And the weird thing is, I feel like we have to add highlights. Something like that and bring the exposure down even more. But the weird thing is the skin tone just looks so weird. And like if we lift those shadows, it starts to get kind of green in here. I mean, this definitely looks better from where it started, but in comparison to the iPhone, the skin tones are nice. Everything just kind of looks like how it's supposed to. And again, I have no idea why the S24 Ultra came in like this, but you will notice there is more detail because that 5X camera now has 50 megapixels in the raw. So when we come in here and compare these two side by side. Yeah, as you can see, it's not as crispy and sharp. It may have more detail in the skin, but I have a feeling that's just because this raw file came in really weird. And the profile is set to Samsung Expert Raw. You only have two choices here. And for whatever reason, that's what it's coming in looking like. Now it's not like this for all the files, that's just this random file. And I wanted to point that out. Now this next shot is both uh, 48 megapixels on the iPhone 15 Pro Max here on the left and the 50 megapixels on the S24 Ultra here. So we should have pretty similar detail when we zoom in. And if we pan around the image here, looking up into the ceiling, uh, the iPhone does have more natural looking shadows where the S24 Ultra kind of has some green in the shadows. And you're gonna notice this a lot on these extreme dynamic range shots where the shadows and the highlights are so drastic. Now you can fix this in post by adjusting a few sliders, but um, it does look like the S24 Ultra is retaining more detail in the shadows here compared to the iPhone smoothing them out. Now in terms of highlights, they look pretty similar, pretty similar detail here. 
similar detail on the concrete. Now if I come into these shadows and we lift these up and I'm gonna see if there's any detail in there or not. So no, it's just kind of smoothed out. This looks like an AI painting or something. So as you can see, tons of detail. And then the iPhone is choosing to diminish the amount of noise in the shadows by smoothing everything out and you're losing a lot of detail there. When the S24 Ultra, even though it's kind of green and ugly, if we boost these shadows, I bet there's still tons of detail in there. Yeah, there's quite a bit more detail in there. So I chose this shot because we're really going to see the detail difference between these two phones. And oh, I need to put the info on here. Okay, so as you can see, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is on the left. The S24 Ultra is on the right. And if we zoom in here, I'm going to lock these. No competition. The S24 Ultra is way sharper. There's way more detail. And overall, in terms of dynamic range, they're about the same, but that S24 Ultra is undeniably better. And that's because it's working with 50 megapixels versus 12 megapixels on that 5X camera. The S24 Ultra is pulling way more shadows than the iPhone here. And I know that if I lifted these iPhone shadows, it's gonna be kind of a soft looking image here because and as we saw in that last image, the iPhone is reducing a lot of noise, which is getting rid of a lot of detail. And uh, if we come in here, and take a look at what we got under these shadows. Actually, you know what? That's that's pretty solid. There's still quite a bit of detail in those shadows. That That's actually not bad at all. You know what? I take that back. The iPhone actually has way better shadows right now. There's actually still quite a bit more detail, but up here when we get to the crane, it's, it's way sharper. All right, so I feel like we're gonna be splitting hairs here. If we're gonna say one is like way, way better than the other, it's, it's gonna be hard to make a choice. And I kind of tricked you guys because the choice A was always the iPhone and B was always the S24 Ultra. Now, the biggest and most obvious difference you probably saw is that the S24 Ultra has that 50 megapixel five times camera. And every time I set that to 50 megapixels versus the iPhone 12 megapixels, it just blows it away. That 50 megapixels is just so much better when it comes to detail. And that also allows them to crop into the sensor to get that 10X camera where the iPhone has to digital zoom. And because of that, there's gonna be a bunch of artifacts and processing going on when it's blowing up that image and uh yeah it's definitely not nearly as good on the iphone outside of that i feel like the iphone was always a little bit more consistent when it came to color and white balance and that was across the board and the s24 ultra was more saturated in contrast so you know i i know that a lot of people prefer that look but if you know me you know that i'm not a huge fan of the oversaturated contrast look but that's subjective now, obviously the main camera on the S24 Ultra is 200 megapixels where the iPhones is 48 megapixels. And when you set them both to 48 and 50 megapixels, they are so similar. It's so hard to tell the difference between the sharpness, the detail and image quality. But when you switch that S24 Ultra into 200 megapixels, it is way more crispy and there's way more detail. But who really needs 200 megapixels? I feel like it's kind of a gimmick. I mean, you're gonna be looking at the photos on your phone, you're gonna be posting them on social media, 200 megapixels is way more than enough, but I guess that allows you to come up with different crops. And with that, it also takes you way longer to take the photo, so you're not gonna get those nice, quick, fast snaps. <laughs> it literally tells you to stand there when you're taking the photo. So I still think that 48 or 50 megapixels is more of the sweet spot, and I'd even say that for like high-end mirrorless cameras as well. Now, I'm not really here to tell you that one is a clear winner over the other, even though you maybe want me to. The image processing and colors are so subjective and they're both such good phones. I'm gonna leave that up to you guys in the comments to determine for yourself, but be nice. These are just phones and they owe you nothing. Anyway, I think that's gonna be it. How many did you get right? How many did you get wrong? Did you hate that I tricked you? I mean, I didn't really trick you. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys in the next one. We're done.